Hello and welcome to another episode of Food is Fuck. My name is Zeke and Simone is behind the camera as usual. And this week, ooh, this week, we have a very special episode for you guys. So stick around, check it out. So today is uh, a very exciting episode for me because I have the awesome Kian here today. And uh, Kian is one of my very, very close friends and he is also my neighbor. And he's one of the very few people in the world whose food I have a lot of respect for. So welcome to the show, Kian. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. I am super, super excited. By the way, Simone is just as excited as I am because he knows Kian's food. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We are super looking forward to this. So what are we cooking today? So today we're gonna do a uh, dried fruit lima bean stew. I find it interesting because it uses dried fruit, which you won't often find in a main course, but in this case, it's delicious, plump, juicy, sweet, makes a great stew. If you're having stew, you want bread. So we're gonna make bread, and this is my fantastic recipe that uses your food processor and thyme to create a delicious loaf of bread that does not require a lot of work. It's so simple, you won't even believe it. He did better than I ever did, and I've been doing this show for like two months now. Wow. He just he just nailed that on the first try. <laughs> that was awesome. I was about to tell. We're gonna start with the uh, bread first, so uh, Kian is gonna walk us through the ingredients. Okay, so for your basic bread, all you need is flour, we need yeast, salt, I'm adding herbs, an unnecessary step, but it tastes great, so I'm adding it. Water. We don't have water. Should we? We have water. Don't worry, we have water. I promise you guys. We have water. We have cooler. Is the food processor necessary? Not entirely, uh, no. But it does make things a lot easier. Okay. Um, you could use a wooden spoon. Uh, essentially, the reason why I like this bread recipe is you can just do it. The food processor is just going to take the work off of mixing. Awesome, so um, we're gonna get started on that. We are going to be giving you guys some measurements. What? I know, I know, it's unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be giving you guys some measurements. However, I'm not responsible for this because Kian is gonna be giving you guys some measurements. Seriously, I chose this knowing that you don't do measurements. <laughs> and the measurements, as much as I'm weighing this on a scale, okay? Because I'm a baker and I do like precise measurements, mm -hmm. however, this bread does not need precise measurements. We're not baking a cake, we're making a loaf of bread and we're looking for points of consistency at different junctures, okay? So we're gonna go into that. There's ways to tailor. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to make a pancake-like sponge. I need 200 grams of flour in here. That is roughly two cups. Again, if you're over, if you're under, we're okay right now. Don't worry about it, don't fix it. So look, I'm already at 220, and just for the sake of it, I'm gonna leave it here. Normally I'd take out that 20 grams, but I'm gonna leave it, just to prove that it isn't that necessary. Not okay? so precise. Not so recipe. precise, yeah. We need yeast. We're gonna add all of our yeast at this point, which is one and a half teaspoon. So one and a half, I don't have a half measurement, so even that's not that precise. We're gonna add half of our salt. This ultimately calls for two teaspoons. I'm adding one teaspoon right now. So you're gonna put another teaspoon? Yes. Later. That teaspoon, the next teaspoon is gonna come in the next stage, which is after we've made a pancake sponge, we've left it for 12 hours, we're going to form the final dough. That's when we're gonna add this last teaspoon. Herbs, not necessary, but I like them. Add whatever you want. I like not necessary, but yeah. mandatory stuff. Yeah, so I mean, just, you know, and no measurement there, just, you know, whatever you kinda like. Okay, put it on. Now, we're making a sponge. So, we're just gonna add water until we get some kind of sponge. We need more. And that's looking kinda good. I'll even add a little bit more. Okay, good. This sponge is gonna sit for 12 hours. 12 hours? Yeah. So just for the for the guys watching, when you say, um, when you say sponge, like what, what, looking what for kind of a, consistency are you are you talking about? Like a, a pancake batter. Okay. But at this point, it really doesn't matter because in the next stage, we're going to be adding flour to make our final dough, and that's when we need a consistency that's going to work as a loaf of bread. Okay. We just want something that's going to generate flavor overnight. So how do you suggest leaving? Like, do we put it in a bowl outside? Do we cover it? Do we put it in the fridge? I like to put it in a bowl okay. um, because you know this is going to dry. 
Uh, outside, if it's cool enough, uh, otherwise the fridge, I tend to leave it out overnight just, you know. And do you cover it? Yep, covered. Okay. You know, we're, we're getting this. We're getting... And it's supposed to be like this with the dry pieces of flour? Yeah, it can be. It doesn't totally doesn't matter. Okay. Well, there you go. So uh, next step, we're going to leave this overnight and we'll show you the, uh, the finished product or the next stage product. So it's uh, the next day. Not really. We just uh, we just made one yesterday, so uh, so, so it's ready for t today's episode. So uh, Kian, please uh, walk us through. What we're gonna do with this is we need to form the final dough. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it back into the food processor. The last teaspoon of yeast is gonna go in yeast. here. Salt. That's fine. That's Salt. fine. <laughs> Salt. Okay. So we're gonna add our last 200 grams of flour, or 200 grams again. 200 grams. Just like in the first section, this really doesn't matter uh, that much because we can always add some more water. If I need to add more water, and I probably will need to add a bit of water, then I'm just gonna add some water, okay? Now, we're looking for... It's gonna form a, a ball, and it's forming the ball now. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's just check the consistency of this. No, it's looking good. See, it's not really sticking to me. It's cleaning off the sides. This is looking good. I think I might just beat it up a second longer. Okay, it's not sticking to the sides, so the dough ball is holding its own. Okay. And that's what we want. Excellent. Done. Okay. And Done. again, we didn't, I mean, we had some in, some measurements here, but we obviously didn't stick no, to No, this was awesome. I love how we just like, <laughs> eh, it doesn't really matter, mix everything together, and there you go, you have bread. And what we're gonna do now, is you would put this back into a bowl, you'd cover it, you'd let it sit there for about an hour, maybe two hours, you know, the time doesn't really matter, but it's at least an hour. Okay. You're gonna let it proof. Then you're gonna shape it, then it's going to rise for its final stage in here before baking. So, floured hands, we take it out, and we're just kinda, you know, shaping it. If I need some more. So you're, uh, you're just shaping it, you're not kneading it? Nope, there's no kneading in this recipe. Okay. Time and the food processor did all the work. I'm not doing any work. And you know, I don't even care what shape it really is, so I'm just gonna throw it in there. After the final mix-in with everything, mm -hmm. we are going to uh, put it in, uh, we're gonna put it in a bowl, let yeah. it proof for about an hour or two, yep. take it out, shape it into the shape of the loaf that we want, and then put it back into the uh, the pan for another hour to proof. Right, so okay. it's going to be, yes. Uh, at this point, it's going to rise into its final proofing before we put it into the oven. Okay, so this is for normal um, instructions, right? So anybody that's gonna be using a normal um, pan like this at home. Kian, however, is gonna be using a Dutch oven and uh, Tell us about that. What this does for the crust of a loaf of bread is nothing short of a miracle. It's going to give you a really crusty, beautiful loaf of bread. So, um, this is the loaf of bread after it has had two hours rising. I have shaped it, and then I put it in here, and then I've given it another hour. The top of the Dutch oven has been soaking for at least a good hour in water. Now, this is going to create the steam, which is vital, to creating the crust inside of a Dutch oven. And uh, you know, this is the same if you're gonna roast a chicken or if you're gonna roast vegetables, you're going to soak the top in water for at least an hour. It's gonna go into a cold oven because if the oven is already hot, you're gonna crack the top. You're gonna destroy your Dutch oven. You don't wanna do that, okay? If you were going to bake in a loaf, then your oven was already going to be preheated. Uh, okay. okay, okay. Now, because I'm just throwing this in cold, I'm putting it in at 390. 390. 390. 390 in a cold oven. Yeah. So half an hour, cold oven. You put it in, 390. That's if you're using a Dutch oven. Um, so if, if you're using a regular pan, do you still do that half an hour, half no, an hour No, I mean, you're just gonna bake it for an hour. All right, because we're doing the Dutch oven, we're going half an hour at 390 from a cold oven. We're gonna take the top off, and, um, and then we're gonna leave it in for another half an hour. Another half hour. And I can't stress enough, you know, the Dutch oven, I love it, but you don't need it. This is still going to be the most amazing loaf of bread baked like this. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. The bread has been baking. Now it's time to take it out. We're gonna remove the top. We're going to baste it with butter. We're gonna stick it back in for a final 30 minutes of golden brown.
Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So it's already, you know. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. We're just taking it out. Remember, we're gonna take the top off. This is the Dutch oven way, and Kian is just gonna baste it with some butter. I mean, this just adds, you know, a certain level of sexiness. Now it goes back in the oven, but minus the top. The last 30 minutes. Shpow! All right, so the uh, bread is in the oven for the last half uh, hour, and we are gonna start working on our edamame dry fruit stew, which sounds awesome and uh, is something that I've never had before, so I'm very excited. Here we have our ingredients. We got our beans, we've got our dried fruit. This is really the crucial part. This is what interests me most in this stew, is that okay. we're using a dried fruit. We got onions, we got uh, garlic and ginger, salt. We have some tomatoes here. Good. Uh, butter, of course. Of course. Um, cooking wine, you could use port, uh, okay. but cooking wine is honestly cheaper, and my port that I have is uh, expensive. Uh, so <laughs> not for cooking. <laughs> Salt and pepper. Um, we have some sugar because nice. we want to balance out the heat that's going to come from the cayenne pepper. Okay. So that's what's going to really sell this whole thing. We're going to have some fruit, plummy, sweetness. We're gonna have some nice texture from the beans. We're gonna have lovely onion and some tomato, but we're gonna have sweet and heat. And sweet that's, and heat. Yeah, that's what's gonna really, really sell this whole thing. Awesome, so uh, we're gonna head off, uh, or we're gonna head to the stove now, because uh, that's basically where we're gonna be doing most of this dish. So, turn the oven, I want a good heat. I turn it to seven. Uh, we're gonna add butter. Lots of it. Our butter is at temp. We're gonna add our onions. Ooh, nice sizzle. So now we're gonna let these cook until they start to take on some good color. They smell great. Yeah, they smell amazing. So now we're gonna add the spice. We're just gonna cook off the spice a little bit. So we have cayenne pepper. I like a bit of heat, so you can go for a teaspoon. I've got a bit more than that here. So I've got a fair bit more than that here. We got some sugar. We're gonna balance it off here. Cooking wine, this bottle, six bucks at Safeway. We're gonna add probably two thirds of this bottle. Gonna add a bit more. After this cooks off just a little bit, we're pretty much gonna throw in everything else. All right. Let's add this. So this is a GG? Yeah. Oh, the GG. The GG. So we've actually reduced quite a bit now. So let's just add the rest of this. Tomato. We got our apricots, we got our plums. This is the most interesting part of this stew. This is why I love it. Love it. Adding the beans. Look at this. We're gonna season a bit. Salt, a bit of pepper, and we'll taste in the end and we're gonna adjust the seasoning at that point. The colors here look just mind-blowing. I, I really love how this looks. Yeah. We're gonna reduce it down to a, a medium, medium high. And we're gonna throw a lid on it. We're gonna let this cook for 10 minutes. Then it's gonna be stewed. Okay, so we've had, you know, what, 12 minutes or so at least yep. uh, of stewing time. So we're gonna open this up and what we have is the tomatoes have cooked down. Ooh. Everything's looking plump. Getting, oh, I get beautiful aromas. I can get the ginger very clearly, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off with some cream and then we're gonna just cook it down, open top to get a stewy consistency, which is you know, fairly close to what we got now. See this, how it's just like, it runs like that. There's no, that's not stew. So we want a nice stew consistency, and that is probably about five minutes away. I like it, Ooh. very nice. It's now ready to take out. Okay. Oh, that looks good. So tip is uh, once you take the bread out, leave it for about 15 minutes um, and don't touch it. This. Mm, the sand. That, that is the reason why I've cooked it in a Dutch oven. Look at this. 
completely cooked through, nothing soggy or doughy, or it's 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 perfect. And I, I'm just using this as an excuse to, uh, <laughs> to, to steal a piece mm -hmm. of bread. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so it's uh, taste time, and uh, this is the awesome Gerard, by the way, one of my absolute favorite people on this planet. <laughs> and um, and yeah, so let's uh, let's start eating this stuff. Spicy? Yeah, mm, yeah. not spicy. It's spicy. No, no, no. Let's, well, honestly, yeah, too if you try the Simone, you're not gonna. Um, you're gonna have the same reaction you had in the shawarma episode. Oh, Remember the that? The marathon <laughs> yeah, yeah. reaction? Yeah, okay. that, 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 that's, that's what's, what's okay. gonna happen. Now with a piece of fruit, have a nice piece of uh, apricot there and you'll get like the sweet and the heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but seriously, this bread, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's very tasty. It is very tasty. So we will continue eating this and uh, we'll end this now. Um, I cannot thank Ian enough for actually um, coming on this show and um, I'm cooking one of his awesome dishes and I hope that he liked it because I would love to have him back. Loved it, anytime. Because, because I love his food, seriously. Kian is one of the best, man. Jar, thank you for being uh, with us today. Um, so yeah, so we'll end it here. Thank you guys again for watching our uh, videos. Please, if you like what we do, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below and share our videos. You guys are awesome. We already cracked 100 subscribers, but we want to keep pushing on. Um, so thank you for all the support and I'm starting to sweat now because it's really hot in here. We've had the <laughs> oven on and the stove on and it's so hot. So, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll head off and we'll see you guys in the next episode. I've been Zeke again, food as fuck. I messed it up. I need, I need this hand for my chapeau, man. I'm not used to having uh, somebody on this side. <laughs> I'll try lefty. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Chapeau!